Hi everybody, thanks for joining me yesterday for our conversation on routines. Uh, the rest of this week we will be looking at uh, different ways to create musical instruments at home and we'll be featuring some of our favourite songs from the Nancy Stewart website which have uh, she has free accessible songs that you can download and then play anytime. Um, but yeah, so today I thought I might start off with one that is always really popular with children of all ages, and that is some um, egg shakers. So these are your little plastic eggs that you often see around around Easter time. Keep your eyes um, out for the days or the weeks after Easter. Any leftover stock is usually heavily reduced, so um, it's the best time to go around and have a look around. There's a couple of different ways that you can use these um, eggs in making shakers and I'll show you a couple today. So we'll start off with obviously um, just your basic egg. What you can use to fill them is anything you've got around the home. I've got a bag of wheat that I had laying around but you could use um, rice, you could use buttons, you could use beans if you've got beans or you know old barley from the back of your pantry. But yeah so obviously scoop it in for most children, not just babies, but toddlers as well, you're going to want to either glue that closed or use a thick amount of tape. And a really good way to uh, convince the children to leave the tape on is if you tape around the seam, use masking tape if you can, then decorate it with textures or stickers or something on there, and then they don't actually want to remove the tape. But what we'll do, so that's your basic egg and your shaker. Again, it's big enough that once it's it's tape and secure, you can leave that with Bubba, Bubba will be able to explore, hear the sounds, um, the sensation, even the weight of the grain moving around. Um, so it's a really nice, quick and easy one. To make it into a maraca, what you can then do is grab a couple of spoons, you've got your egg, and if you position them like so, and tape them up, you can make yourself a handy little maraca. So I've actually got clear tape here. Masking tape's probably the way to go, but clear tape will be all right. And as you can see, I'm just taping along the actual seam of the egg as well. So not only will it help hold a handle in place, it will seal that egg as well. So bear with me. Nothing like a bit of early morning craft. So once that's all taped up, that's all sturdy, really awesome. Again, for your younger children, it makes it a little bit easier to hold. They've only got little hands, but they can hold it around the handle and give it a bit of a shape. Now these ones, again, you could decorate on the egg with texture and draw some shapes. Well, you might want some permanent textures because these aren't working real well. Or I've also got some stickers here. And these are just relatively cheap ones that I come across. Anytime I come across any sort of resources that are relatively cost effective, pop them into the cupboard, into the craft box. I think we've discussed on other days and it always, it's a fail safe when your children come to you saying that they're bored. You uh, get out the craft box and, and see what they can make. So I've got some letter and number stickers and you could pick them out and they could be relevant to your child. So um, the first letter of their name, how many years they are, that sort of thing. Or you can just pick them at random. So that's a basic shaker. Um, you don't even need your egg or your spoon. So that's you know something that if you know and you've planned ahead and you've, you've saved them from earlier in the year, you might still have them. Even easier is just something like a plastic bottle. Same thing, have the children um, wrap it with masking tape. You can decorate the whole bottle or you might be able to put stickers onto it or, um, you know, your textures, whatever you've got. Fill it, same sort of thing, your rice, your grain, whatever. I'm going to make a mess here. Fill it up. Buttons, anything that you've got. Makes a nice cost-effective shaker. For your younger babies, that noise alone is quite intriguing. Watching it drop, but yeah, if you've got your, your toddlers and your older preschooler children, they can absolutely help you decorate that and really get into that as well. Um, but yeah, so, and as you can see just on the slide here, these are a couple of examples. So this is a child that's actually put some popcorn kernels in there and decorated it with streamers 
and tissue paper. So whatever you've got around um, will be fine. The children are so creative and if you provide them the materials, they'll come up with something fantastic. And again here, just the egg shakers with some beans, rice, buttons, little beads. Um, but yeah, obviously making sure that it is either hot glued or taped really well so that it's sealed just to prevent any choking issues. And um, now I'm going to play for you one of our Nancy Stewart songs. Which is fantastic. You can join in once you've made the shake up. This song is really good to learn about rhythm. As you can see, it's not as easy as you think. So it encourages listening skills, rhythm. And following instructions. It's not as easy as you'd think. But the beauty of these songs is that they're easy enough that you, even your little toddlers will be happy to join in and have a go. as well so they can actually get around and shake themselves and then stop at the stopping so there's lots of ways you can incorporate these songs but yeah fantastic way to extend on something the children have been able to make themselves So today, or this week, I wanted to share with you a story that links back to our routine theme from yesterday, which is It's Bedtime William. And children and parents alike um, can have a few struggles with bedtime. So today I'm going to read from you, read you the big book, It's Bedtime William, by Deborah Neeland. We'll actually be doing some craft activities after this uh, that Deborah's provided herself, which is fantastic. And again, free resources that can be found um, online with a bit of Googling. But, uh, it's bedtime, William. William, no more jumping, said Dad. William, it's bedtime now, said Mum, but I'm not tired, not one little bit. It's bedtime, William, it's late, but we've told you umpteen times, yes, but we've read you a long story, what if, and let you watch TV, can I? One more kiss goodnight, but... And off you go. Quick sticks, it's bedtime, William, now. Not fair. <gasps> Have a look. And going back to our conversational reading from earlier weeks. Have the children have a look, look at the picture and let them predict what they think is going to happen next or what William has seen in bed. A sleeping lion. Mum, Dad, there's a lion in my bed. No lions allowed in your bed, William, said Dad. Tell it to remove itself at once, said Mum. But won't he eat me up, asked William. Be brave, said Dad. Be friendly, said Mum. Here goes. William tiptoed over to the bed. Um, excuse me. Who's that waking me up, mumbled the lion. It's me, William, and it's my bed and you have to get out right now. Why, asked the lion. Because my mum said so. The lion sat up. Is your mum mad at me? William patted her paw. Don't worry. Well, where am I supposed to sleep, asked the lion. William thought for a moment. This trundle bed? That's where my friends sleep. That might be okay, said the lion. 
Guess what, said the lion. I'm not tired anymore. Let's play. Whoosh, thump. Dad's voice boomed up the stairs. William, stop that racket and go to sleep. Anyone would think you had a wild animal in your room. I'm sort of tired now, said William. I'm not, said the lion. Let's play hide and seek. Found you. Found you. None of these things are getting William to sleep, are they? It's bedtime now, William yawned. But I'm not tired, not one little bit, said the lion. I'll tell you a story then, said William. William told a story about lions in jungles. I want a funny story this time. William told a story about lions in frilly pants. The lion rumbled with laughter. Another story, he asked. No more stories. It's bedtime now. Oh, look at the expression on William's face. It's certainly changed. He's happy here. It's a little bit grumpy down here. I'm cold, said the lion. William gave him a blanket. My bottom feet are cold, whimpered the lion. William wrapped his feet in woolly jumpers. I'm thirsty, said the lion. William gave him a glass of water. Do you want to see me gargle? Not really, said William. Another drink? The lion held out his glass. No more water. It's bedtime now. I'm hungry, said the lion. Here, have my apple. Mmm, tasty, said the lion. You're eating so slowly, said William. Hurry up. Nearly finished. The lion sighed. <sighs> What's the matter, asked William. I have to go to the toilet. Quick sticks, said William. I'll count to ten. Did you count clean your teeth? Yep. Show me, said William. Mmm, sparkly. Some of you guys might recognise some of these uh, sleep stalling strategies. William might have done it for mum. And now William's having to deal with it with the lion. Tuck me in. Okay. Can I have a teddy too? Here. Will you sing me a song? Uh, can we jump on the beds? No. Let's stay up all night. No. Do you want to hear a joke? No. It's really funny. No. Wait, there's one more thing. No. What is it now? Good night, William. The lion's finally ready for sleep. Asleep at last, said Dad. He's worn himself out this time. That's funny. I've never heard William snore before, said Mum. Hmm, what's down here? Little tail and the picture. And there we can see they've gone to sleep together. Do you think Mum and Dad believe that there was a lion in his room? I'm not so sure. That's a fantastic book. And as I said, one that uh, some of those things would be quite familiar to mums and children alike. Uh, so one of the resources that I found online and that what uh, the authors provided is actually making a little mobile. And it's, there's a few templates that can be accessed online. We'll put the links up or for our families that receive um, the drop-off packs, it'll be included. Um, but yeah, essentially what it is is making a mobile using a paper plate as your top half. And then you've got your two templates here. So you've got a lion and you have William. And then you can colour them in, cut them out and stick them onto your mobile template. Decorate the template. You could put some beads on there, paper, colour them in, draw a couple of pieces of string. And then you can create your own mobile to hang from your bed. So that's just one of the suggestions that, um, yeah, found online or that'll be included in this week's pack as well. Um, but yeah, a lot of things are, you know, about being resourceful using what you have at home. So again, if you don't have a paper plate, you might be able to find an old coat hanger or it might just be, um, might be a twig that you found outside and hang some string from there and hang your bits and pieces. So a lot of these ideas, um, you know, we've pulled out some resources, but please don't think it's the only way that you can complete something as we saw with the shakers earlier as well. 
use what you've got on hand. The children aren't going to mind. It's more about the experience than, you know, what it looks like as such. Um, and yeah, get involved with them. Get involved, get, put the music on, have a bit of a sing, have a dance. Um, the Shaky Shaker and Stop song is, as I said, harder than it looks. Have a go, let me know how you go. It might just be my terrible rhythm. But um, hopefully you've enjoyed those few suggestions. We'll be making a couple more instruments tomorrow. And uh, I look forward to catching up with you then. Thank you.